We have more for your ears only. I'm David Alpern. I'm Catherine Herzog with this news quote. He has not been corrupted yet. That was Noga Alonai, a 31-year-old Israeli bank clerk, explaining her vote for journalist-turned-politician Yair Lapid, whose centrist Yesh Atid party made unexpected gains in parliamentary elections and is expected to moderate a coalition with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's conservative Likud party. Now this. You let the consulate become a death trap. Had I been president at the time, I would have relieved you of your post. With all due respect, the fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it because of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? President Obama and every one of us here knows that American foreign policy is not defined by drones and deployments alone. American foreign policy is also defined by food security, energy security, humanitarian assistance, the fight against disease and the push for development, as much as it is by any single counterterrorism initiative. Departing Secretary of State Hillary Clinton finally visited Capitol Hill last week to face sharp Republican criticism over the murders at America's mission in Benghazi, Libya. And she answered with a powerful emotional counterstrike that nevertheless skirted the heart of the matter. Was the attack an unpredictable event, as she suggested, that mainly requires better security? Or the plan of militant groups that were, or should have been, known to U.S. operatives there? Clinton's designated replacement at state, Senator John Kerry, also testified last week, stressing the non-military face of American foreign policy, though it is precisely the drones and deployments that are the subject of most controversy these days, both at home and abroad. Indeed, the United Nations last week announced an investigation of drone strikes and designated killing of presumed terrorists by the U.S. and others, and divisions remain within the Obama administration and between it and the government of Afghanistan over the size and duration of any lingering U.S. military presence there. To discuss last week's hearings, the issues they raised and avoided, and related developments, we're joined again by Michael Brenner, University of Pittsburgh Professor Emeritus and a fellow at the Center for Transatlantic Relations at the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies. Welcome back to the program. Well, thank you. What was your reaction to Clinton's appearance overall uh, as an end to her tenure at state and the start of what could be a new political uh, incarnation? Well, I mean, the most immediate impression, and I think the most important thing, is that the entire episode was a distraction from the sort of still significant sort of policy issues associated with both the nature of our engagement in Libya and to uh, the management of the, uh, the State Department. Unfortunately, the hearing sort of degenerated into a sort of personality contest between Hillary Clinton and some of the uh, Republican uh, senators. And what did you think about John Kerry's stress on non-military policies and the need for healthier U.S. finances to pay for them? This is the kind of rhetoric uh, which one resorts to periodically. It's not an indication of any sort of significant change uh, in American foreign policy. Uh, The administration wants to gain some sort of political mileage from our gradual and probably too slow withdrawal from Afghanistan. If you look at the, the main currents of American foreign policy, they remain sort of unchanged. And above all, there's this sort of all-encompassing war on, on terror, which has been the mainspring of our involvement throughout the Islamic world and is the reason for the sort of series of, of failures, some of them of, of a disastrous nature. Uh, talk about, about drones. I mean, the president has fallen in love with drones as the preferred instrument of American policy in this, uh, you know, grand war against terror. The media and the Republicans seemed mystified by a question to Hillary about U.S. sanctioned arms transfer from Libya to Turkey. Uh, But there have been reports that the CIA in Benghazi may have been monitoring or guiding such shipments for ultimate delivery to more uh, and less Islamist rebel groups fighting the Assad regime in Syria, which could have angered uh, other factions. Uh, Do such covert operations seem likely to you? don't have any idea, although I've questioned a few uh, uh, people I do know in Washington about it, whether that's true. But let's try and get straight what the story about Benghazi is. Yes, the matter of security was mishandled, and that responsibility in an operational as well as in a 
uh, rhetorical sense, right, in an abstract sense, should be placed on the shoulders of Hillary Clinton. And it conforms to the general administrative mismanagement of the department over the last four years. As far as the uh, what we were doing in Benghazi, there again, to the issue as a policy issue was not Ambassador Stevens. He was collateral damage. And what you had was a group of, of uh, sort of jihadi militant, one of the several groups now operating in, in Libya. And their target was the CIA operation that we'd set up in Benghazi, an operation whose aim and purpose was to sort of track down some of the most sensitive weaponry that had been taken from Gaddafi's arsenals after the fall of his government, particularly shoulder-fired anti-aircraft missiles, which we feared would get into the, you know, the world's armed, uh, armed trafficking circuits. So we set up this operation to try and identify the individuals, the groups, and maybe even possible to take some kind of unconventional action. That mission might be reasonable in terms of purpose. Even at the intelligence level, uh, operationally, it was sort of poorly organized. And this Libyan outfit had become aware of it, and they had three aims. One, to break up the operation. Two, to see the re- seize the records the CIA had acquired as to who was who among the militants in order to find out what we knew. And three, to embarrass those people in the Libyan government who had provided, uh, you know, by nodding their head, some nominal cover for the CIA. And they succeeded, you know, completely. We knew absolutely who was involved, not the individuals. We had no idea of their plans. But we knew very early on this had nothing to do with spontaneous demonstrations. What we were trying to do was conceal the fact, one, of the CIA operation, two, that as a result of the downfall of Gaddafi, you had all these these groups running around Libya, which came as no surprise to most people, but has run counter to the fictional tale that Libya was a great success for the promotion of democracy in the Arab world. Michael Brenner is University of Pittsburgh Professor Emeritus and a fellow of the Center for Transatlantic Relations at the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies. Quote from the news, the North is sending a wake-up alarm to Washington and Seoul. That was Choi Jin-wook, an analyst at South Korea's Institute for National Unification on North Korea's threat to undertake new long-range missile and nuclear testing. Next, Obama, energy, and the environment for your ears only. 